What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Supergirl season three episode titled Shot Through the Heart. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Supergirl this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. So this was an interesting episode of Supergirl. Should I start out talking about the good stuff or the bad stuff? Good stuff, bad stuff. Let's talk about some of the bad stuff. First and foremost, this was truly a filler episode. This was a definitive filler episode. It contained a bunch of stuff that didn't necessarily have a lot to do with the main story going on with the world killers and Rain and the Legion. It had a little bit of that throughout and then a little bit at the end, but the majority of the episode was just filler. And on top of that, it did not focus on Supergirl. Kara was pretty much a passenger in this episode while Wynn and the supporting cast were driving the car. Now, normally I would say that's fine. I don't really have a problem with that, but this is a return episode after several months away. You would think they would, would want to return with Supergirl and jump in with the bang and bring in all the stuff going on with the world killers and everything, but it was kind of with a whimper. It wasn't necessarily a horrible episode, but it wasn't an episode I would expect that they would return with after a long time away. So we had one main story this week and two side stories. One side story with a bit more to it and one with not quite so much. And then some stuff with James, we'll talk about that in a bit. But the main story was Wynn's father, the toy man, a character we met a while back, uh, was killed in prison and they're holding a funeral for him and his mother shows up and the casket blows up and then we arrive at this situation where they don't know if he's really dead or alive and they argue about that for a while, which is also kind of silly. And Wynn's mother, played by uh, Lori Metcalf, um, she does a okay job as this character, but there's a lot of flaws, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So in this episode, we meet Wynn's mother, who returns after abandoning him and his father years and years and years ago, and he resents her for that. I totally get it. And as far as Wynn goes, all of his emotional beats and the stuff that he's struggling with between him and his mother and his father, all of that was great stuff. I think that as far as a character, he did as much as he could do as a supporting character in this episode to carry the episode on his shoulders. Now, would I want to see like Wynn episodes every single week? No. He's not really, in my opinion, that interesting of a character. He's okay as a side character, but when it comes to Arrowverse side characters, he's one of the ones that I just don't find really that interesting. And the most interesting part of his backstory with his father is now sort of done with in this episode. So it really is a journey for him to become an individual character. Because up until now, I still, I don't know, maybe it's just me, I feel like Wynn hasn't really been an individual. He's been a supporting character. And then his mother comes along and she adds a bunch of other issues and it adds into some really weird decisions throughout the episode. You know, bordering on whether or not, you know, they were trying to, I don't know, give us a red herring with his mother, but that doesn't really add up. And then she makes a ridiculous decision at the end of the episode that drives the plot where I'm like, why? So jumping into what she did that really confused me, we have to address the CGI in this episode, the visual effects. So we have these flying monkeys that come in and before they take their break from that scene through the commercial into the next break, I thought, okay, they look kind of cool. But then you notice pretty quick that the visual effects aren't all that great. They weren't mapped properly. So like when people are looking at certain things, you can tell that they're just diving around aimlessly while the you know the visual effects department just filled in empty space with flying monkeys because i don't think anybody really got hurt maybe i think maybe there's a couple of injuries but for the most part it was just kind of like this distractive thing that happened and of course it happened right after they send home you know alex uh john and his father which i'm tired of that happening i'm tired of like these shows sending characters away and then immediately after that happens some huge problem arises and it's pretty big i mean it happens on all the shows but i've seen it happen multiple times on supergirl they're in the do they send people home and then something huge happens and it's really kind of frustrating because the fact that it may happen once or twice is one thing but it was pretty predictable like i remember when it happened i was like okay she's sending she's verbally telling them to go home so something's gonna happen and of course it did we're getting back to the visual effects of, of that whole thing the monkeys were just weird so anyway um you know Wynn's mother uh, somehow jumps in and is able to just use a screwdriver and open this this monkey that Wynn is having trouble opening which i have to say at first i was like well she knows how to open it because obviously they're her monkeys uh, but that's not what ends up being the case i guess she was just the only person smart enough to use a screwdriver 
Um, and after a little bit of fiddling around with it, she finds a piece within the monkey that tells her where they were manufactured or where they came from. And this is when she makes that crazy decision. So she decides to, well, they've been laying the groundwork through the whole episode where, you know, she was talking about how people weren't really paying attention to what they were doing and stuff like that. And I thought it was kind of odd that she kept doing that. But it was for the purpose of her being able to get a weapon in the episode. Anyway, she gets the weapons and she makes the decision that she is not going to tell anybody anything about this. She's going to go to this place and confront this person by herself. And then I thought, okay, maybe she knows who this is. I got the impression from the way she looked at it that maybe she knew who this person was. I thought, well, maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's someone that she met over the years. But no, it was just some crazy, like stalkerish ex-girlfriend of his father who for some reason felt the need to carry out his wishes after this all happened and oddly enough has access to a bunch of really incredible technology that I just don't understand how it was even how it was even possible. Okay, so on top of the flying monkeys which are toy-like and I was willing to accept that this person, this copycat individual, may have access to some of these things and understand how they work because they're somewhat autonomous. I get that or whatever. Um, we find out that inside of the facility where she is, where I guess the toy man had all of his stuff, she has access to a giant robotic Tyrannosaurus Rex, a robotic dinosaur. Let that sink in for a moment. A giant robotic dinosaur. And if that wasn't enough, we come to possibly the biggest infraction in the entire episode. Now, I've already expressed my feelings about them treating Kara or Supergirl as a side character or a passenger in this episode. But then she gets captured inside of some giant, like, toy box or toy packaging, which stops Supergirl. Now, I don't know if there was some kryptonite aspect to it. You guys have to let me know in the comments below, but... From what I could see, and from what a lot of people that were watching it live with me could see, she was just trapped inside of this, like, hard plastic container. Now, okay, maybe she was losing a little bit of oxygen, but this is Supergirl. She should have been able to burst out of this container immediately. Right away. But she wasn't. And you might say, Eric, you're nitpicking quite a bit, but this is Supergirl. Supergirl. This container that was holding her should have not stopped her at all, period. We saw early in the episode that she was fast enough to go and change and come back as an explosion was happening from the casket and, and save people. So there's no reason she should have been able to, first of all, have been captured by this thing. Secondly, being contained by it. I'm sorry, you guys. Sorry. I just, this is me. You know how I am. If it triggers you, I'm sorry. I just cannot stand when characters with powers their powers just completely get overlooked for plot, and this was 100% that. There was no reason for this. This was literally setting up Monel fighting the dinosaur so we could learn about the big secret tricks that we're going to be using to fight the world killers, which that's another can of worms altogether. And when it comes to this packaging device, if it was so easy to capture Supergirl, the most powerful person that was on the scene at that time, then why didn't they just why didn't she just lock everybody up in these little packages? It would have been pretty simple, right? I mean, you had no problem capturing Supergirl. So three other people, only one of them having a, a fraction of a Kryptonian's power, um, you could have captured them. But you didn't. For what reason again? So needless to say, I'm going to call shenanigans on the whole action set piece. It was so lazily handled Everything was extremely predictable leading up to it. And when you look back at the episode leading up to this portion of it, you can tell that all they were doing was like putting the breadcrumbs down. That's it. That's all any of that ever amounted to. None of it really mattered. All of it was just leading up to this point. And the fact that it was an ex-girlfriend who was obsessed with him, just so cliche, so horribly handled. And I mean, I give them some points for having a cool giant dinosaur. I mean, that was kind of neat. But outside of that, Really nothing substantial happened here. And the erratic behavior of his mother, a character that we just met, it was happening and we didn't really know why she was acting the way she was acting. Was she good? Was she bad? We didn't know enough about her to even care, really. Um, but I will say this again, when as a character uh, grew quite a bit emotionally in this episode, um, but I don't think I'd want to see another episode 
completely dedicated to win. Um, with that being said, let's talk about the stuff that I really liked in this episode, the stuff that I really like connected with. So one of the things I talked about earlier was how I get really frustrated when they verbalize that they're sending somebody away for whatever reason, just before something really bad happens. Uh, and in this episode, we sent away Alex, uh, John and his father to go have dinner. They've been planning this dinner and John's father had been exhibiting some weird symptoms of forgetfulness and things like that. And so we knew going into this episode from based on the previews that uh, something was going on with his father. And we find out more about it in this episode. And it's quite an emotional journey. So what we find out in this episode is that John's father is suffering from a Martian form of dementia. Now, dementia is not uncommon. It's something that as people get older and most families, you're going to have a relative or someone who's known somebody with this condition. And it's very heartbreaking because you watch someone slowly over time just forget things. It starts out with little things and then it becomes much more serious. And although it's not always life-threatening, it's definitely heartbreaking, especially for some people whose mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, grandfathers don't even remember who they are. They have to be reminded who these people are. And sometimes you can go in and they'll be like, they'll know who you are and they'll speak to you. And then other times you'll go in and they just have no clue and they get afraid, they get scared. And it's scary for them and it's heartbreaking for the people who are involved in the situation, the family members and things like that. So this portion of the episode I thought was extremely well done. It was well handled. I think the acting was top notch. This portion of the episode saved the whole episode for me. If it weren't for this, I probably would have a much more negative opinion of this episode as a filler episode. But this was great. I think that touching on this felt very human. Yeah, some of the dialogue here and there was a bit, you know, heavy handed uh, with certain things. But overall, the heart and soul of these characters and the things that they were dealing with as a side story, I think it was excellent. And it was totally worth the whole episode. I could have done another 10 minutes of this in the episode if they felt like it. Um, again, hats off to these guys for handling this. I thought this was great and clearly the best part of the episode. Let's talk about the mon and Kara stuff. So this was kind of the third storyline that was going on in this episode. It was a very tiny bit of this week's Supergirl. We have mon talking to Kara about things going on with the Legion. And so now she's aware of kind of what's going on with the Legion. He hasn't told her everything yet. Obviously, we're working up to that. And I think that's going to advance as we get closer to the finale uh, for this season. But he's sort of giving Kara a bit more information. And she tells him that she feels weird, you know, confiding in him or him confiding in her about his relationship with uh, Imra. But at, at the same time, this opens up the door for him to let Kara back in and have a conversation with her about their relationship which, as we know, it looks like they're heading back towards connecting these two characters, which is really exciting for the people who are ready for Caramel to come back. And maybe there's some people who like him with Emra and they're not so happy about it, but it feels like that's what's going on here. Now, is Kara going to be happy with the fact that he did not tell her this? Because that's really the big thing. We know that she can explode over any bit of information that he does not reveal to her. So when he comes around and finally tells her that, her reaction is either going to be anger that he didn't tell her and she's going to spend a couple episodes not speaking to Monel, or she's going to sort of feel like, okay, this is an opportunity for me to work on things with him and maybe put us back in a position to be together in a relationship. I don't really know which way it's going to go, but it feels like that's definitely what this is doing. It's opening the door for that. And that's pretty much all it was. And we do know that uh, Monel might have some tricks to teach Kara. Let's talk about that for a second. So after fighting the giant robotic dinosaur, Monel grabs some fabric that looks like a blue cape, ironically, and he takes the dinosaur down by wrapping the cape around the dinosaur, I think is what happened. And the visual effects were not great. So he pulls it down. And so he tells Kara those are cape tricks that he learned. And she says, oh, well, mine just kind of gets in the way. And so he's going to teach her ways to fight world killers with a cape. Now, I know that's a bit hyperbolic for me even to talk about that and it's that's fringing on like going too far with nitpicking but if that is really the only thing he has to offer which i hope it's not um then you defeat world killers with capes the world killers are like kryptonian level power um so maybe for monel having cape tricks is worth it but for someone like supergirl does she really need tricks to beat the world killers 
Uh, it's kind of weird to me, the idea of cape tricks. I'm just like, it was kind of a running gag in the chat. So I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that uh, if this is all he has to offer, I'm going to be very disappointed. But I'm hoping, because the season has been pretty good so far, that there's going to be more to it than that. Just hoping there is. So let me know in the comments below if you think cape tricks are the key to defeating rain and the world killers. It could be could be cape tricks and i know because someone in the comments is going to ask me about it because i didn't touch on it the karaoke night stuff I'm just going to say it didn't bother me too much i get it it was a bit silly but the entire episode wasn't like a glee episode it was just like karaoke and people blow off steam with karaoke all the time i don't have a hard time believing this i think it does seem like something that they would do to sort of go out and just sing and have fun and i thought it was a nice break away from you know dealing with all the stress they're dealing with but i just again Coming back on an episode like this, I, I don't know if this was like the strongest foot forward for people that have missed out on Supergirl so far this season. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see. It's just one episode. This was, again, a filler episode. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, but let's talk about the end of the episode and some information we got about Lena and James. So at the very end of the episode, we get a scene exposing that Lena is working with Sam and she's got her in like a hospital bed inside of like a force field area um, because she knows, I guess now this is confirming that she knows exactly what's going on with Sam, which means she knows that Samantha is Rain and I guess she's studying her. I, I don't really know. This is very like Lutherish. Like this is like, if we're talking about going full Luther, this is pretty close to what something like Lex Luthor would do to hide a very powerful character and try to understand it and maybe even control that character. So I, I think that's what's going on here. I, I don't really know. Lena is being very secretive and the whole James and Lena gets like the award for the most forced relationship of 2018. There's literally no chemistry between these characters. None at all. So I feel like this relationship between James and Lena was specifically leading up to something that's going to happen with the, you know, with the Lena character and all of the stuff going on in her labs and stuff. I think all of that is just to add more emotional weight to that particular part of the story. So we'll have to wait and see. I, I don't really care what happens with James and Lena, but Lena holding uh, Samantha in a cell, that's very interesting to me. So this was probably one of the most interesting parts of the episode and it happened at the very end. Go figure. With all that being said, I just feel like this was kind of a meh episode. I liked one half of it, and the other half I just thought was average. So it wasn't all that great. I don't like when Supergirl is a passenger on her own series. This isn't new for me. This isn't me arguing just to argue. I have said this since season one, that Supergirl needs to be the focus of her own show. And when she's not the focus of the episode, the episode tends to falter a bit. And that's what happened this week. Wynn was great. I thought he did a great job with what he was given. All the stuff that happened within that storyline was very forced, very contrived, very cliche. Although I love him meeting his mother and sort of coming on an emotional journey from point A to point B. Overall, I just did not like the action set piece. I think the visual effects were sub-average. Um, I thought the villain was whatever. Like, that was really bad. Uh, love the stuff with Alex, John, his father. More of that is absolutely fine with me. I think that's great. The James and Lena stuff feels forced, but the Lena stuff with Samantha is great. Um, and the mon and Cara stuff, I see we're heading in a certain direction, and I like that they established that. Now we're getting away from the whole, like, let's keep it all secret. We're heading towards full disclosure, and I'm cool with that. Um, but where was Brainiac? Where was Brainiac and uh, Emra? Like, where were they? They've been missing just... Oddly enough, doing whatever they're doing in mon isn't necessary to do anything with them. I mean, I know he's kind of frustrated with them lying to him, but they just, they've disappeared. Are we going to show up and be like, oh, we were doing this on the side? I mean, that's the only thing I could think is going to happen. I just can't imagine they would be gone for episodes at a time with nothing going on. So I, I don't know. Maybe the Legion is ultimately a waste this season. I feel like we need to see more Legion stuff. I love the ship. I love the characters. And uh, they're definitely, to me, more interesting than anything that's going on with the Earth characters, other than John's father's situation. That's pretty much it. Um, so I'm going to give this episode a... I'm going to go low with this, guys. Don't get triggered. I'm going to give it, like, it's, it's slightly above average for me. So, like, a 6 out of 10. Um, because the special effects just were not very good. Over half of the story was just average at best 
Um, so that score pretty much rests on the Alex, John, and uh, father, his father's situation. Um, so yeah, 6.5 out of 10. 6.5 out of 10. That's what I'm going to end on, a 6.5 out of 10. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with my score? Do you disagree with my score? Is there anything that I talked about in this video that you guys don't agree with me on? Or is there anything I didn't speak about that you'd like to hear my opinion on? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, take care. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will catch you guys later. Hey guys, Eric here. Hope you enjoyed my video. If you want to become part of the Ericverse, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment on this video. All of my information is down in the info box, all my social links, my Patreon, all of that good stuff. Join the community, become part of this little world here on YouTube, and go ahead and check out some of my videos over here. I got some great content if you want to keep exploring my channel. Thanks again. Take care.